Welcome back. Today is day two of our graphing quadratics unit. Today's lesson will be quick because we are covering the vocab needed for this next unit. Just a reminder, a link to the handouts provided in the description so you can follow along. Oh yeah! Our do now problem is a which one doesn't belong. I love these. Your job is to find a reason for why each problem A, B, C, D is different from the others. There could be many different answers for each one. So pause the video, take a few minutes to find a reason why each problem doesn't belong, and then resume the video when finished. All right, let's go over this do now. Um, again, which one doesn't belong? So nice and simple. Let's provide a reason why um, A, B, C, and D don't belong. Um, for A, um, I don't really have a good reason why that one doesn't belong. I've been looking at that for a little bit and kind of stuck on that. So maybe you can write something in the comments if you find something that, uh, a good reason why that doesn't belong. Let's skip on to B. Why does B not belong? Um, one thing I notice is it's the only one with the y-intercept at 0, 2. So it's the only one at, with the y-intercept at 2. So if you notice, the first one has a y-intercept at 4, the third one has a y-intercept at 4, and D also has. So A, B, A, C, and D, they all have y-intercepts of um, 4. So this is the only one that has a different y-intercept. All right, what about C? But when I look at C, the first thing that I notice is that C is the only one with two uh, x-intercepts. So I'm looking at this graph and I'm like, oh, there are two x-intercepts. None of the other graphs have two x-intercepts. Um, B doesn't even have one x-intercept. Um, the other thing that's probably obvious you might have said is it's concave down. It's a parabola. It's the only one that's a parabola and concave down. So this one is the only one that's opening down. Okay, so we see that also. So that could have been another reason for uh, C. And for D, that one obviously to me is that it's the only linear function. So when I look at this, it's the only graph that's a linear function. It's not a quadratic function like the other three. All right, so hopefully you got some answers for those ones. All right, so let's go with the vocab for this chapter. So there's, um, there's obviously it seems like there's a lot of words that we're going to need to know. Um, things that we refer back to all the time. So let's go with the first one. Um, number one, the vertex of a parabola. So what's a vertex? It says the highest or lowest point, also known as the maximum or minimum. So that's important. We call this these vertex, they have a maximum or minimum. So if we look at the graph here, um, the highest or lowest point, where is the highest or lowest point on this graph? Well, it's already marked for you, but it's this point right here. So that point has a name. So let's write that in. That's called the vertex. Okay. And in this problem, it's going to be a minimum. Why is it a minimum? Because it's the lowest point of the grass graph. There's no other point lower than that. All right. Next thing. And if this graph was the other direction, if it was concave down, it would have a maximum. It would be, have a highest point. All right. The next thing that we need to know is an axis of symmetry. So what is an axis of symmetry? You know, symmetry is like when you cut things in half, right? So the line that divides the graph into two perfect halves. So let's sketch a line and I'm gonna draw this line dotted. So I'm gonna go, why am I not drawing? There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. So I'm just sketching a line. So this line right here, we call this the axis of symmetry so let's write that in okay perfect um, and so again as you can see that's going to cut the parabola exactly in half and you should notice that the axis symmetry is going to pass to the vertex that's going to happen all the time all right um, concavity Ooh, this is going to be very helpful for when we go to higher math all right Con there's two there's two things there's either concave up so let's just concave up or there's concave down so concave up what is that when a graph decreases then increases across the domain so if you look at this graph right here this is concave up we call this one concave up uh, let's just write it here concave up and the reason we say that is because this graph if you go across the domain, 
this is decreasing decreasing as you go this way and then what happens on the other side then we start increasing increasing sorry it's so messy all right but again decreasing and increase all right so again what you should notice is that concave up a lot of you like to just remember it as like it's just a u-shaped graph pacing up or like a happy face if you do a face on it if you do like oh yay um, concave down is kind of like the sad face right so it's a parabola when it opens down all right um, something from earlier in math things that we should know is our y-intercept y-intercept a point where a graph of a function crosses the y-axis so remember this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis so a y-intercept is just this point that will be very important so let's write that in so y-intercept Okay, so again, when we're looking at graphs, we're going to want to find those all the time. Um, and the last one, let's finish this up, the x-intercepts. So if we know what a y-intercept, we should know what the x-intercepts. Well, x-intercepts are where we cross the x-axis. So let's write a little arrow on there. This is an x-intercept. This is an, let's draw a little arrow there. That is an x-intercept also. Okay, so again, when you're looking at parabolas now, you're like, oh man, there's a lot of things that we need to know and we need to be able to talk about as we work with them. Now, I want to highlight one huge important thing. When we're finding x-intercepts, we have different names that we use for them too. So we also call, if you ever read in a problem, it says find the solution. We're talking about the same thing. A solution and x-intercepts are the same thing. The other thing that we're talking about, another way of saying it is, they might say find the zeros. And if you're asking for zeros, we're talking about the same thing. We need to get that in our mind that these words are just interchangeable. We're talking about the same thing. And the last one, very important, you'll hear us say a lot, um, what are the roots? So if we're talking about the roots, if we're talking about the zeros, solutions, we're all talking about the same thing. We're talking about the x-intercepts. All right, and that'll be the vocab for this chapter. That's what we'll be using for the rest of this chapter. All right, so let's go over this. Um, identify the key features of each parabola. So again, like we said before, this vocab is gonna be very important. So the vertex, take a look at your notes if you forgot what that is. The vertex is just the highest or lowest point. So the vertex on this graph is way down here. So there's my vertex. And what are the coordinates of this vertex? That's what we wanna know. So what's my X and my Y for this one? So this one is gonna be at negative three and negative four, so I'll write it up here on the top. So my vertex is negative three, negative four, okay? The next one, axis of symmetry. Now, remember that the axis of symmetry cuts this in half, so let's sketch this, so, ooh, missed. The line's already given for me and I still missed. So the axis of symmetry will be this line that cuts this parabola in half. All right, now, but what is the, how do I write that mathematically? Well, that's just a vertical line. And how do we write those? We write those because it crosses here at negative three. Um, we write it as X is equal to negative three. Now recall, every time we have an equation that's X equals, it'll always be a vertical line. If we wanted a horizontal line, if we wanted a line to go the other way, if we wanted this, then we would just say Y equals some number, okay? But if it's X equals a number, It'll always be a vertical line, so it'll look like that. So whenever we're doing these problems, now later on in math, you're gonna have to switch, your axis symmetry will switch, switch directions, it'll rotate over. But right now for this unit, we're just gonna be focusing on uh, parabolas that are concave up and concave down. All right, y-intercept. Remember what a y-intercept is. Y-intercept is where we cross the y-axis. So that means that's gonna be this point way up here. So the graph crosses, that's my y-intercept. Okay, and what is the, what are the coordinates for the y-intercept? Well, the coordinates for that one are zero and five. Okay, pretty easy. This is a pretty easy little vocab day. Um, nothing too um, challenging here. 
x-intercepts, remember what those are. That's where your graph crosses the x-axis. Well, we have two x-intercepts. We have one here, we have one there. I'm just gonna write it in. So this is my x-intercept. There's another x-intercept over here. And what are the locations of those? One of them is at, it looks like negative five, zero. And the other one is at negative one, zero. Perfect. Okay, this is all, the, these are all the key words and the key vocab that we need to know for this chapter. And the last one, how would you call this one? We would just call this concave and I'm just gonna put up. Done, we're done with this. All right, so again, you're gonna have some homework that helps you review this and we're gonna continue to use these words all the time. Okay, vertex, axis symmetry, uh, intercepts. And remember, there are multiple names for x-intercepts. From x-intercepts, there are more than one name. We could say roots, we could say zeros, we could say solutions, but we're always talking about the same thing. All right, good luck, hope you enjoyed.